Jesus. Get him off me. The ant packs a bit of a punch when it, when it bites. And when you do get bitten, you get bitten by 10 or 20 of them. It's like a sherbet bomb exploding in your mouth. They're just incredible little packets of flavour. It's not often insects are welcome in restaurants. You want some ants on top? <laughs> but at this function in Adelaide, green ants are the star attraction. Actually, I should have taken a photo of the berry. Because he goes, are you going to try them? And I said, I don't know. And it's the cocktails the crowd is particularly curious about, with the launch of a green ant gin one of two released in South Australia in the past fortnight. Yeah, it tastes like real tangy, eh? Like. The Adelaide Hills distiller behind this creation is Sasha LaForgia. He often experiments with native plants, but when presented with indigenous insects, he was initially less enthused. I put it off for as long as I could. Um, I didn't want to eat ants. <laughs> And I had these pictures of little ants in my still, just like, ah, like dying and popping. Um, but as soon as, like, finally I, I ate one, and that was it. Like, they're just incredible little packets of flavour. To add that extra bite to happy hour, someone needs to find those little packets of flavour. And that's Shannon Motlop's job. Got a a couple of large nests up there now, so um, we'll have a go at those and see if we can get, that, get ourselves covered in some ants. The well-known former AFL player runs a business with his family, supplying a range of indigenous ingredients, including green ants. There it is. Grab. They have a permit to harvest in the Northern Territory and a shop called Something Wild in Adelaide. Securing this lively product can be dangerous work. Getting there. Out in the bush and um, there's, there's plenty of snakes around here, so, um, you know, some of the most venomous snakes in the world. So you've got to be very careful um, and, you know, you've got to keep, while you're looking up in the trees, you've got to be looking down as well. I might grab it from there. What comes out of the trees isn't dangerous to touch or eat. But this catch is not one you want to hang on to for long. Oh, Jesus. Get him off me. The ant packs a bit of a punch when it, right. when it bites. Um, so, they, and when you do get bitten, you get bitten by 10 or 20 of them. Despite the downsides, the skilled footballer is relishing the change of pace of his new career. My wife doesn't like it. She thinks I'm having too much fun in my job, so... Um, yeah, it, it is quite an enjoyable job, um, um, even though you get bitten by the ants. Um, uh, you know, we, we do a number of different things. We pick a number of different um, native foods, um, um, which is, you know, great fun. And we're learning a lot about um, the environment that we live in. A lot of that fun comes from working with family. Younger brother Daniel, who also had a successful AFL football career, manages the business. And whether they're hunting green ants, or in this case, magpie geese, there's plenty of sibling banter and bickering. It's not great today, so we've got to make our shots count, so that's why Shannon's handed the gun over to a better shooter. That's the funny thing about working with your brother, you can be very honest and, um, and, you know, I don't think we take anything to heart either. Um, uh, whereas if you're working with a, another staff member, you probably couldn't talk the same way to them. <laughs> uh, but with your brother, it's a little bit different. But um, we'll have to get a bit more professional as we start to employ staff. <laughs> These native birds are actually what started the green ant business. Daniel Motlop was showing magpie geese to a group of influential chefs, including René Redzepi from Noma Restaurant, when he mentioned the ants more as a joke. We were just messing around, I suppose, uh, showing some chefs, and yeah, now they love it. As a kid, you know, going to school and going out bush, we used to, I suppose, mess around and, and taste it, taste a few and, and bite, bite their backsides off and, 
Um, just got that little little hit, I suppose, but um, we never ever thought of it as a, as a commercial um, food industry, I suppose. You talk to anyone from Darwin and, and they just think they're annoying and they're a pest and they you know, get all and bite you in the garden and all that sort of thing, rather than something that could be an amazing flavour of the Northern Territory. Richard Gunner is a beef producer and owner of a high-end butcher business in South Australia. Meat still takes up most of the shelf space in here, but his growing interest in native ingredients is also evident. In fact, he used to own something wild and is still a shareholder after selling the majority of the business to the Motlops. One of the real challenges I see with Australian native ingredients is that you know, a product like broccoli has had, you know, over the course of thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of farmers' time, researchers' time, probably a billion dollars embedded in, in government research to work out how to grow a broccoli, what fertiliser, what temperature, what, how much water, how to store it, how to move it. Whereas all these Australian native products, um, there's thousands and thousands of years of use, but not in a modern context. Someone who is putting her own modern twist on the ingredient traditionally used more as a bush medicine is Adelaide Hills cheesemaker Chris Lloyd. She's released a goat's cheese wrapped in lemon myrtle and topped with green ants that recently won a super gold medal at the World Cheese Awards, beating more than 3,000 entries. I think it's a combination between kaffir lime, lemongrass, um, lemon leaf. It's like a sherbet bomb exploding in your mouth and I think that's what really attracted me to it because it was so fresh. So I've been bursting to try one of these because they look like little edible forests. So yeah, I'm, gonna, do, I'm just going to grab one. Yeah, they're just Which might delicious. make me a little bit of a piglet, but anyway. <laughs> we usually do serve it with a knife and fork, but <laughs> that's okay, <laughs> Kerry, you just go right ahead. I'm enthusiastic. I know you on. are, I can see that. <laughs> so what do you think? Mm, it's really zingy. It is, yeah. I actually was wondering whether it would all be overwhelmed by the, the lemon myrtle, but then you actually taste the ant and it's it kind of, yeah, it does, it pops. It does pop, yeah. That pop comes with a hefty price tag. At $350 a kilo, it's one of Australia's most expensive cheeses. And the creator isn't shying away from showing off her hero ingredient. Just down the road from Chris Lloyd's Woodside Cheese Factory is Sasha LaForgia's distillery. The setup is fairly rustic, but the former winemaker clearly knows his way around us still, winning a gold medal for his first commercial gin at last year's World Spirits competition. Getting the most out of these little guys, though, has been a learning curve. Once you crack their little abdomens open, um, the flavour and aroma really starts to come out. Uh, it took quite a long time to figure out exactly how to distill them and how to manage it to capture it all uh, and not lose it, because they are a little bit delicate and fragile. The project is a joint venture between the distiller and Something Wild, with the gin selling for around $100 a bottle. Like Chris Lloyd, Sasha LaForgia is not disguising the key ingredient that his partners go through pain to get. Every bottle gets um, a lolly bag, I guess. It gets a few ants floating in the bottom, um, and the brave people at the party can eat them at the end. Back in the top end, Shannon Motlop is making sure that's all that ends up floating in the bottle. After freezing the nests for six hours to kill the ants, it's time to remove them using chicken wire as a sieve. We found this the uh, most effective way to um, sort the ants from the leaves um, as quick as possible. A good nest produces around half a kilo of edible insects, with all sizes making the grade, even the eggs. But at this time of year, yields drop off and a black bug moves in. Yeah, that's just riddled and it's caused a bit of a problem for, for us because uh, it's really hard to sort from the ants. You've got the black fly and in large numbers, um, pretty much outweighing the numbers of the, the green ant. That's almost a throwaway right there. Like farming, um, there's seasons with everything, so um, 
we're experiencing the off season at the moment, but we're still managing to 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 get some ants into into the shop at the moment, um, but just in smaller numbers. Wholesale customers are paying $650 for a kilo of green ants. That might sound like a lot of money, but it's also a lot of insects, around 30,000. And one of the advantages of supplying such a lightweight product is the low freight cost. Bringing green ants from the top end to their southern shop front is also creating casual work for indigenous communities, with the potential for full-time jobs as the business grows. And Daniel Motlop hopes the family's enterprise will encourage other Aboriginal people to look at their own heritage and culture in a commercial way. We're trying to start little businesses within communities so they can, um, you know, there's jobs out in those communities. It's creating jobs in communities where, you, where there ain't a lot of jobs and a lot of work so um, people can stay in, stay in their community and um, not have to leave home. What is this? Those are our green ants from the Northern Territory. So we pick them up there. Sharing their knowledge about native foods is a key part of building this business. And how do you use that? Um, you put them on a sorbet. Um, oh, yeah. Aboriginal people used to make a tea out of them, mash them up. Oh. They taste citrusy and you can have a try. Yeah, yeah, sure. And it's not just the customers getting an education. You feel proud, I suppose, a little bit. Um, and it's, it's come a long way and I've, I've learnt a lot more um, as from the chefs and they've probably learnt from me. And with many more edible insects in Australia, has the initially reluctant green ant gin distiller been bitten by the bug. Are we going to see more insects in your gin? <laughs> uh, it depends if the lid of my tank's left open or not. <laughs>